Hello, welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really good. Today I'm going to be doing another meal prep video. In this one, I'm going to go through some breakfast, lunch, and dinner ideas, the full shebang. So I'm gonna make four days worth of breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next few days. You guys loved my other meal prep video, which had some different ideas, so I'm just gonna go through some other alternatives as well. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit a like and subscribe to my channel. It helps my channel so much and I really appreciate it. As I did in the last videos, I'll do the same format where I pop the macros on the screen as well as the prices. So I'm starting with my first meal, which is a breakfast one and it's a protein, yogurt and frozen berries. So of course you're gonna need some containers. I'm just using these plastic ones from Aldi or you could use jars, whatever you fancy. And then I'm using two tubs of the Skya fat-free natural yogurt. I usually do get one big tub, but they didn't have any, so I just got two. I would love to see some of your creations, so don't forget to use the hashtag meal prep with Liv and tag me on Instagram. Next up, I am using some frozen berries for my toppings. Obviously, you could use just normal fruit, whatever you prefer. And I'm also using some Impact Whey in cinnamon Danish flavor. This is from my protein and it's optional, of course. And then I'm just grabbing a container to put my yogurt into and I'm emptying both the tubs, which works out 640 grams of the yogurt in total. And I'm adding 120 grams of protein. That's the optional part, of course. Make sure you use a big stirring bowl because I've made the mistake so many times of trying to mix it in like the smallest bowl ever. And then as you're stirring, it kind of goes to a thinner consistency. It looks like the most delicious cake batter right now. But yeah, it gets thinner as you go. So it's easier to pour into your tubs. How delicious does that look? And I'm just separating my containers. I just use these small ones and they're super cheap from Aldi. I think they were like 1.99 for four. Um, and they've lasted quite a while now. And then I just weigh 160 grams of the protein yogurt into each portion size. This is so satisfying to watch back. It looks like white chocolate from here. But yeah, you get quite a lot of mixture. I always think weighing stuff's the best way because you can track your macros and you just get equal portion sizes in each one. Oh my goodness, look at that. It looks like white chocolate melted. <laughs> And then this next part's optional, but I am obsessed with these zero sugar, zero calorie vanilla flavor drops. They're quite strong, so you only need about a drop into each one, but they make all the difference and taste really good. I've also got the coconut ones. And then I just give them a stir into each bowl. And then we're going in with the frozen berries. These are so good. And I'm using two big scoops, which works out 70 grams of the frozen berries. Again, you could use like any fruit toppings of choice. So next up, I'm using some cacao nibs. I absolutely love these and also some ground cinnamon. So I'm sprinkling two grams of the cacao nibs into each portion, portion size. These are really nice. You could also use like milk chocolate drops or dark chocolate ones, but it just adds like a bit of crunch to the texture. And then I'm also just sprinkling ground cinnamon. I love putting cinnamon on everything. It's my favorite. So that is my finished first meal, which is a good breakfast or snack. How delicious does that look? So, so good and really high protein, amazing macros as well. And then I'm just sealing each container to pop into the fridge. You could also freeze these as well. Um, but yeah, I'd really recommend keeping them refrigerated at all times. The first lunch or main meal, whatever you prefer, is going to be like a salmon, potato and the most tasty salad ever. My like, it's one of my go-tos and it's super satisfying, really, really tasty. So I'm excited to share this one. And you're gonna need a big slab of salmon for four portions worth, some boiled, well not boiled, some white potatoes to boil. And one packet is more than enough for four per portions worth, but depending on your portion sizes. And then some, a bag of like salad of choice. I've just gone for and a peach sheet one. And I'm also some olives to put on the top. This little packet has like feta cheese work. It's really, really good. As a cucumber, I'm just gonna chop the whole thing up and add that into like a salad bowl. And then some cherry tomatoes. I just 
cut like half a packet of these up to pop in as well. So I'm starting with boiling the kettle to boil the potatoes. I boil the potatoes for about 10 minutes before popping them into the oven for around 20. I always start with the potatoes just because obviously they take longer than like the salmon and like preparing the veg and whatnot. So whilst my potatoes are boiling away, I just grab my chopping board and start preparing all the veg and make sure that's washed before I start chopping away. I find it easy just to pop everything into one like salad mixing bowl so you can mix it all together and then I like, add salt sauces and stuff. So I'm just measuring out 200 grams of tomatoes before I start chopping them. You actually get loads, like that's not even half a pack of like the small pack of tomatoes. And then just chopping all my tomatoes into like quarters and then popping them into the salad bowl as well. Then after 10 minutes I'm just draining out my potatoes and then getting them ready to pop into the oven for about 20 minutes or so. And then obviously just popping my potatoes onto some tin foil um, before popping it into the oven. Then I just measure out two grams of extra virgin olive oil to pop all over my potatoes. There's nothing worse than like dry potatoes I must admit. Um, so yeah I'm going to season those too. For seasoning I'm using this Tropical Sun All Purpose and just some garlic granules. Really really simple, obviously just use whatever seasoning you've got in. This is just what I fancied and I already had this in, I didn't buy these from Lidl. And then I'm just popping my potatoes into the oven for about 20 minutes but yeah just keep an eye on them. After I've popped my potatoes in, I start with the salmon. So I just wrap that in tin foil to start with. I always find it easiest to cook like after it's cooked and everything rather than before. And I'm just seasoning that. This is super quick and easy. I'm just using some garlic granules and some all purpose seasoning again, but just seasoning whatever you fancy. Um, this works out 470 grams of the salmon as well. And then I just wrap it really tight so like no moisture, no moisturizer can get out. Then I'm just seasoning my salad. I'm just popping some balsamic vinegar on the top of my salad. I find this really satisfying. It's super low cal and really, really tasty. Just put the salmon and potatoes in the oven. The salmon only takes like 10, 15 minutes and the potatoes are about 20, so a little bit longer. So that is the potatoes done. They actually look really nice. I left them in a little bit longer because I like them a bit crispier. Um, and then the salmon is here, everything, the salad is there. So I'm just gonna put it all into containers. So it's quite hard to weigh the actual salad because obviously you've got like chunks of cucumber and stuff that obviously weigh more than others. But I just kind of put like big handfuls in each. So it's like 170 grams into each little container thing and then just like push it up to the top. Oh, so happy with how the potatoes turned out. Um, so it works out about 180 grams of potatoes into each. Like you just kind of have to break them up a little bit and add them into each container. So next up is the salmon, which is one of my favorite fishes and so good for you, really, really high in omega-3. So this is a bit trickier to measure out because it's like on one big slab, so you just kind of have to like, fork it out or I do anyway but obviously you could cut it up I guess but yeah this is just the easiest way and I'm just weighing out 117 grams of salmon into each portion which is actually a really big size and I don't like being stingy when it comes to salmon because I absolutely love it. <laughs> and then I'm going to start making the next meal meat free meatballs they're made with like pea protein Hopefully it should be really nice. I haven't actually tried these before, but I just thought I'd mix things up. But obviously you could use like alternatives, meat ones, turkey ones, whatever you fancy. And then I'm gonna make some pasta and just like veggies on the side. Really, really quick. Like they only take about like 12 minutes in the oven, so. And then on the meatballs, I'm just using the same seasoning, the all purpose one and the garlic one. So I'm just starting with putting my meatballs first in the oven before I like prepare everything else. These only take about 12 minutes and I'm just popping them in some tin foil and putting some garlic seasoning as well as like the old purpose one that I used in the other recipe. And then I'm just sealing the top again, like to keep, this keeps all the moisture in. I just think they always taste a bit juicier. When you are meal prepping, and especially if you're like tracking or anything, um, remember to measure before you add, add water, like measure your pasta dry. So I'm just using this uh, little Fusely whole wheat pasta. I've been using this for quite a while, it's really nice. And I'm just measuring out 270 grams of the dry pasta. Um, it can be really easy to get confused, so like I just mentioned earlier, make sure that you like measure it dry and stuff. The same goes for rice too. 
and then just boiling my pasta until it's all cooked through. Once I've drained my pasta off, I also like to add a bit of seasoning. I really like adding garlic, especially when I'm going to put like anything tomatoey on top of it. I just think it really adds to it and makes all the difference. So I'm also adding some optional chopped tomatoes to my pasta. These ones are like a tomato chopped thing with herbs. Um, tastes really, really nice actually and just make quite a bit of a difference. It just adds more like taste to the whole meal. And whilst that's on a low heat, just mixing that all around and making sure it's all cooked through. And lastly, just cooking my tender stem broccoli. And this only takes like six or seven minutes. It's pretty much cooked the pasta and then the meatballs have just come out. And then I've also got some little toppings that are just optional. I'm just going to box all that up. Oh, we've got one overboard. So I'm just starting with measuring out my broccoli. I absolutely love tender stem broccoli. I don't know why I haven't stuck to that earlier, to be honest, because I used to just get the big round ones, but I just think this has got so much more taste to it. And I'm just measuring out around 50 grams of the broccoli into each container. Then I'm just measuring out my pasta. I like to cook it so it's ever so like slightly undercooked so it's not mushy like when you reheat it during the week. So yeah, just make sure like you've drained the pasta and rinsed it with cold water to stop that happening because there's nothing worse than like mushy pasta. Um, and then just portioning that out correctly and it works out like 100 grams of the tomato sauce obviously in like each container as well. Just to mention as well, I generally keep my meal prep around three to five days, like never any longer than five, just because it just gets a bit gross. And I think especially with like a pasta dish, it tends to soak up all the sauce so it can go a bit dry. So that's just a little heads up. So I'm using three meatballs in each portion, which works out 84 grams of these ones. Obviously, if you're vegan or whatever, these are fantastic or vegetarian. You could use some other alternatives or just want some meat ones. Um, I'm not vegetarian or pescatarian or anything like that, but I just really fancied trying these when I saw them in the supermarket. This is just an optional topping. I really like olives and it's like a little feta salad thing. Um, but yeah, you should actually put this on, of course. So I'm just going to pop some of this on. I absolutely love olives, they're really high in vitamin E and other antioxidants, but yeah, really nice toppings and super tasty, they've also got like some seasoning on them, but yeah, I'm adding 37.5 grams onto each portion and that's like the whole packet for four, but just nice, quick and easy. Um, this is a really nice sauce as well, the red hot cayenne pepper sauce. So that is the meal prep all finished and the protein yogurt is the nicest breakfast as well as just like a snack in between meals, pre, post workout. Um, really all of these are like super nutritious and really tasty more importantly. <laughs> wow, look at that goodness. Five of these two, you know, lunch or dinner meal and then in the middle. I would love to see some of your creations if you do use any of these meal prep ideas by tagging me on Instagram and using the hashtag meal prep with Liv. I just wanted to show you in this video as well, like, you know, you can make meal prep exciting. It doesn't have to just be like chicken and rice. That's it. You know, you can make it really tasty and like add sauces and whatnot. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what other like meal prep ideas you would like to see next, like maybe a breakfast edition, snack edition. I am the snack queen, by the way. Um, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love it if you could stick around, join the fam and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.